What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are installing the flywheel clutch and pressure plate onto the K24 for our Subaru BRZ engine swap. Now here's what we're gonna be working with. This is a kit from Collins Performance. I'll leave a link down in the description if you guys wanna check this out. But this is a full swap kit for a K24 to a CD009 transmission. So this is your big billet aluminum flywheel piece. You have your adapter that will mount onto the block to allow you to mount the transmission onto this. Then we have our six puck clutch and we have our very nicely powder coated pressure plate. Now this comes with all of the tools and the bolts and everything that you are gonna need. I've got some brake cleaner that we'll potentially use as we go along here just to clean off all of the surfaces that are going to mate together. And we've also got some blue Loctite for the flywheel bolts and potentially some of these others as we move forward. Let's jump into it. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is remove this old flywheel plate if you haven't already. If you got your engine and this wasn't on it, then obviously you can just kinda skip this step, but ours came with this attached, so we've got to remove this. Now, you are going to need a special type of socket. These are 17 millimeter, 12 point bolts, and they need this 12 point socket. So this guy's just gonna fit right over top of each of these. We're gonna pull these eight bolts off and then this guy will come out of the way. Now, these do come pretty much exclusively, I think, in a half inch drive and these are tightened down pretty well. So if you have an impact, use that. And if you don't have an impact, grab yourself a uh, half inch breaker bar from Harbor Freight <laughs> and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get these guys pulled off. So pro tip that I forgot to mention, if you are doing this without an impact and you're having to actually try to break these free with a large wrench or a breaker bar, then you're gonna find that this plate here is gonna wanna spin on you because this is just connected to the crankshaft which will just turn freely. Um, what I found is a really good solution is if you can get a long bolt to go through either one of these corners and a smaller bolt and nut that will go through one of the holes on this plate here, you can then just wedge a little wrench in between the two and that, whenever this guy goes to turn, will prevent this plate from turning as you're trying to crank it out. What you'll find is that it's got this little plate on the front, so then this whole plate should just come right off the back. Give it a little wiggle. And there you go. And now if you need to replace your rear main seal for your engine, now is a perfect time to do that. Now that we've got that out of the way, I put on a fresh set of gloves just to try and eliminate as much oil transfer as I can, even though I'm gonna be cleaning as I go along, just for the sake of trying to keep things clean. And so now we're gonna put on our big, big Collins flywheel adapter. This is kind of the, the one of the main pieces that actually allows you to mate this engine with the CD009 transmission. So basically all I'm gonna do, the back side of this guy has a little ridge here in the middle. Let's see if I can, here that you can see. And so all I'm really gonna do at first is just try to get that mounted right onto the flat surface here on the uh, exit of the drive shaft. I'm just gonna hold this up. Hoop. See if we can't slide this over. There we go. And it just rests there. Not that I'm gonna leave it there for long. I'm gonna keep my hand under it just in case. Oh, I placed that dang near perfect. I went ahead and got brand new flywheel bolts for this just because of the fact that why not? You know, the old pieces are uh, rusty and worn out. So if you want to use, reuse the old ones, you're welcome to do so, but I figured I might as well go ahead and get new hardware. So all I'm really gonna do is just try and get these guys threaded in here, just hand tight. We are gonna be torquing these down with a torque wrench. I just wanna get this thing kind of 
held in position. Now that I've got one of them installed, I'm going to install blue Loctite on the rest of these and then I'll come back and grab that one at the end. That guy is basically just in there to uh, <laughs> prevent this whole thing from falling off onto the ground. And the trick with Loctite is really just to not use too much. This is all I'm gonna put on there. I'm sure I'm not necessarily doing this the technical spec way, but I've just got a teeny little bit on there. I don't want these things to be impossible to remove later on. I essentially just want them to not rattle out of place, basically. Now that we have all of our flywheel bolts in here finger tight, uh, I'm first going to torque them down to about 30 foot pounds just to make sure that everything seals properly. And then I'm gonna go around and do the final torque to 90 foot pounds. So I'm using that same 12.17 millimeter socket and I'm, I'm using a, I don't know, whatever this is, three inch or so, a half inch to half inch extender just because of the fact that this is dish shaped. And if I didn't have that, I wouldn't really be able to get back in here. So 30 foot pounds all the way around in a star pattern, just like how you would do your wheels, but obviously there's eight of them. 30 foot pounds, 90 foot pounds. You may be asking yourself, well, how am I supposed to tighten these things down if the flywheel itself is just gonna turn the whole crankshaft, like I'm not gonna be able to get any leverage and I can't really just hold it with my hand and push down on the other side. I too struggled with this dilemma for about the last 20 minutes until I figured out a pretty good solution. So if you come around the back side here, if you look on the back of the um, Collins flywheel plate, you'll see all of these little holes. There's a bunch of them kind of all the way around. And I'm not sure if they designed it for this or not, but it's a pretty good use of these holes. I took a pretty thick bolt, stuck it into one of those holes, and I'm just basically pushing it up against, you know, as I'm trying to turn this from the front clockwise to tighten, counterclockwise in this direction, as this is trying to turn in this direction, this bolt is stopping it from doing that by pressing on the bottom of the engine block. 30 foot pounds is done, 90 is next. Whew. All right, 90 foot pounds all the way around. Uh, nothing else is really gonna need to be torqued down that tight, so uh, you guys can't really see this, but this, uh, this engine is sitting quite diagonally. So uh, I'm just gonna do a double tap on all these, just a little on the torque wrench just to make sure that every single bolt is down. I didn't miss one. And then we'll get moving. We've got our flywheel adapter on. Now we're just gonna hit it with some brake parts cleaner just to clean off any oils that are on this surface before we install our six puck clutch. And also, I just remembered, we can now rotate this back, pull out that little bolt that I had in the backside that was holding it in place. So we've got our six puck clutch here and as you can see on this side it is flat with the springs and on this side it has this raised section that actually houses the springs. This raised section is going to go on the outside and this flat is actually going to make contact here with our flywheel adapter. So I'm going to take my alignment tool, I'm going to put it in through this side so that whenever I go to put this onto the flywheel, it lines up just right. There we go. You kind of can't mess it up. You use the alignment tool and you're pretty much good to go. We slide that guy in, make sure that your alignment tool goes all the way to the back and now we can grab our pressure plate. With the clutch in place, now we can look at getting our pressure plate on, this very nice blue color. I didn't know what color it was gonna be when it came, but uh, I like it. So um, I'm gonna use some brake cleaner to again clean off this surface because this surface is going to be making contact with the other side of all of these six pucks here. So we'll get this thing cleaned off. Our pressure plate surface is nice and clean as you can see. And so the way this guy mounts is there are three sections where there are double holes at the top. It's kind of a big one on the left side and a smaller one on the right side. And that happens once at the top there, once down here on the left, and once right here on the right. And so on our 
flywheel adapter, we have these little pins in three different spots. The smaller holes up top here, as well as in the other two locations, will effectively line up right on top of those pins. So with our pressure plate just sort of resting in place on those three pins, we come around to the side here and you can see that this pressure plate surface, this guy right here, is making solid contact with the puck of the clutch, which is also making contact with the flywheels. And now the only thing left to do at this point is to take the uh, provided hardware that came with the kit from Collins. These are all 12 millimeter bolts. There are nine of them. One, two, three, all the way around. We're gonna to torque those down to 19 foot pounds and then we can remove the centering tool. And I'm gonna take these kind of in a star pattern but almost sort of in threes if that makes any sense. So the one at the top that is mounted to this pin the one on the left that's mounted to the pin and the one that's right on the right side that's mounted to the pin. And then I'm just gonna shift one bolt over, one bolt over, trying to just sort of get everything tightened up evenly all the way across the board. All right, got them all torqued down for the first time. I basically had to go around, around and around and around because as I started tightening some of them up, when I would come back to those same bolts, they would be loose already. So basically that whole gap that was about, I don't know, quarter, maybe five sixteenths of an inch of gap between the, uh, the end of the pressure plate and the actual flywheel surface itself. And so basically I was just pulling that in closer and closer, little by little as I was tightening all of these bolts up. So I'm just gonna go around, give all of these one good click here. Yeah, see I got a little bit of movement on that one. We come down to this guy. Yeah, a little bit of movement there. And yeah, just going around, being patient, getting all of these clicked in. And now you know if you've done a good job aligning your clutch disc, if your alignment tool pulls out just like that, nice and easy. So the splines on this guy, on your alignment tool, the splines of the ends of your transmission piece is gonna slip right into here. So you want everything to be nice and centered. Nice that they included this in the kit. And the last thing we need to do to get this engine ready to go is to install this billet aluminum transmission adapter. This is kind of the magic sauce here. This will bolt onto the back of the engine and then the transmission will bolt onto the front of this. And so this is really the big deal. Um, comes with all the hardware you need. Uh, one thing I do want to point out that's rather important if your engine when you got it obviously, you know used K20 or K24 does not have these little Sleeves there's one here on the left and there's one here on the right. You are going to need those um, Luckily Collins includes a replacement set one and two uh, If those are either too bad to be used and you need to pull them or if you don't have them whenever you got your engine. So these sleeves are actually going to help you locate um, the different positions, obviously, because we've got all of these holes over here. We're not gonna be using every single one of those. This plate is somewhat universal in its use. So, you know, they use this for, I believe, the S2000. I think they might also use this for a 2J or for an LS or something like that. But yeah, so you want to line up these sleeves with the two holes on the left and the right side of this adapter plate. So the kit comes with all the hardware you're gonna need, so we're just gonna slip this guy right over top, sort of hold it in place with my knee and get these bolts threaded in. <clears throat> and so now that I've slid it on over top of those two sleeves in this hole, on the, let's see if I can show you guys this, we'll see. We've got this hole on the left. It's not labeled, it doesn't have any threads or anything. And that is where the sleeve on the left side goes. And then if we come over here, there actually isn't a hole, like a pass-through hole on this right side, but it, uh, it comes in, oh geez, and I just, <laughs> I just popped it off so that it's loose. But basically, it, it comes into the hole and it just sort of fills the back side of the plate. So we got our hardware in, we have one bolt, two, three, 
and four. And remember that this hole right here, you can actually just barely see where that sleeve is on the inside of there. And then the other one is pretty much right behind this pin. It, and you're not gonna be able to see it because it's bolted down all the way. But yeah, the other one lines up in a half uh, non-pass-through hole right on the back of here. That's where the other sleeve lines up. And there you go, that's the whole clutch and adapter kit installed. And that is gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And if you enjoyed the video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date on the build. We are so, so close to dropping this thing and the CD009 transmission into the engine bay for its first test fit. And then we got wiring, we got fabrication of the downpipe and the intercooler piping. We got everything else that's gonna be coming with it. And then we're gonna have our first startup. I'm shooting to get all of this stuff before the end of the year. So make sure you're subscribed. And until next time, build your dreams.